y'all. Welcome back to the Daily AMG and welcome to my December slash January book haul. So I have over 40 books to share with you. So I'm just going to get right into it because that's a lot and I don't want this to be an editing nightmare. So all right, so let's start with the books that I got for December and January, obviously, for my book of the month picks. And in December, I always do the three, whoa, I always do the three books that you're allotted because, I don't know, I can't help it. So I picked up One Day in December. This is by Josie Silver. And I have already read this and absolutely loved it. Gave it five stars and it was one of my favorite books of 2018. Then I also picked up No Exit. This is by Taylor Adams. And this is a thriller that deals with a woman going home in a snow, ice storm situation. And she is at maybe a truck stop. And she finds that a child is like in the back of a van in a cage. And now she knows that the people that she's stuck in this convenience store with, one of them is a kidnapper. It's already, well, this was December and now it's February, but it's getting so much good buzz. So much good buzz. I really want to pick it up. But one thing I do want to do is I want to gather all of my book of the month club books and I want to see how many of those I've actually read. I think that'd be a fun video. When I have some extra time, I think I'm going to make that video happen because I'm really interested to know. And then I also picked up Severance by Ling Ma and this is supposed to be like a satirical end of the world thing. Is it the end of the world or just another day at the office? I don't know. It's supposed to be really funny. So those are the books I picked up in December. And then for January, I did pick up three, but the other one was Killers of the Flower Moon. And I gave it away already. <laughs> I have ordered that so many times for Book of the Month and ended up giving it away. It is one of the best books ever, ever, ever. And it's a massive part of Oklahoma history. So I just keep handing it out to folks. Okay, so I picked up Stephanie Land's Maid. Hard work, low pay, and a mother's will to survive. This is nonfiction. I love when Book of the Month does nonfiction. I read a ton of nonfiction, so I really like when they, yeah. Okay, then this is a September 2016 Book of the Month, but that is A Gentleman, a gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towels, and I have heard so so many things about this book. I guess it's a, about a gentleman who's maybe exiled to a hotel in Moscow and his life at the hotel, what he sees outside of the hotel. It is kind of more of a chunker than I realize, but a lot of people rave about this. So I was going back. I love to go through the backlist also of Book of the Month. And sometimes they'll be sold out. Sometimes they won't be sold out. It's kind of interesting. They have a pink Gone Girl that I really want. But I think it's been out of stock like for 100 years. Okay, oops. I, just, I got this new light, but I don't think I like it. It's like ultra bright. I'm afraid that it's washing me out. Okay, then I'm going to go really quickly through the books that I got from Book Outlet. So I did a Book Outlet slash... Just Fab Hall at the same time. So I picked up, as far as classics go, quite a lot of Puffin classics. They're so cute. So I got The Wizard of Oz. I don't know where to put all these. Adventures of Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer, Rip Van Winkle, and other stories. King Arthur and His Knights of the Round Table, On the Road by Jack Kerouac, and I, I just, this is my favorite cover, like, of life. The Jungle Book, another really great cover, and actually, on Book Outlet right now, they have another cover that goes along with these, and it has an elephant, and 
trying really hard not to get back on Book Outlet. So I got Just So Stories and Kim all by Rudyard Kipling. Oh, my word. And then A Christmas Carol and The Canterbury Tales. So those were some classics that I picked up in the month of January. Then I got St. Maisie by Jamie Attenberg. This is a fictionalized, non <sighs> fictionalized, non fiction, not a thing, fictionalized account of an actual person, Maisie Phillips. Yes, Maisie Phillips. Maisie Phillips. And then I got Overseas by Beatrice Williams. And The After Party by Anton Disclafani. Because this cover is amazing, even though I got to get that sticker off. I hate that so much. All right, and then I got a little something different. This is by Sandy Hall. And this is 14 viewpoints of one love story. So that just sounded a really great to read in February, but also just 14 viewpoints of one love story. That just sounds like something I haven't read before, which I love. My hair isn't working for me today, y'all. So please do, I do apologize. Then I picked up Kitchens of the Great Midwest by J. Ryan Stradall. Stradall, Stradall. And I just heard really amazing things about this, and it was on Book Outlet for under four bucks. So sign me up. And then, and then I picked up Razzle Dazzle by Michael Rydell. I guess that's how you say that. I just say Rydell, like Rydell, hi. And yeah, this is about the battle for Broadway in the mid '70s. Could you imagine if Broadway wasn't Broadway? What would we call it? Where would they have gone? It would have happened, obviously. It would have gone somewhere. But we wouldn't call it Broadway, and that would just be weird. I picked up, also, this is my last book, Outlet Book, Lady Bird and Lyndon. This is the hidden story of a marriage that made a president. And I absolutely love our first ladies, and I love their stories, and they're just the unsung heroes of these United States of America. I love them oh so much. All right, the next stack <laughs> that I have here, a local bookstore was going out of business and so I popped in on their like second to last day of business and picked up some books because that's while we're here. Okay first I got Never Let Me Go. I'm not going to attempt. I want to attempt but I know I'll butcher it and I, that always just makes me cringe. I have heard that this is a really gripping heartbreaking tale of family. This says this is a page turner and a heartbreaker, a tour de force of knotted tension and buried anguish. I have just heard really, really good things about it, but it, I have definitely heard that it will like tear you apart. And then I picked up Laurie Forrest's The Black Witch. I have heard a lot about this book, especially I saw this a lot during Spookathon and Witchathon and Hauntathon and whatever all the readathons were for the month of October. And I think it got good reviews and praise. I can't remember. I just know that I saw this cover and their YA section was definitely had definitely been picked over. So I noticed the cover. I recognized the cover. So I picked it up. All right, and then I picked up on their used book side, The Girl from the Savoy by Hazel Gaynor. This says, London, 1923. Welcome to the Savoy Hotel, a glittering jewel in London's social scene where the lives of the rich, the famous, and the infamous intertwine. I know I like that. And then I picked up Wild by Cheryl Strayed. I absolutely love this book. I do already own it, but I... I give out a lot of my books, and that's one that I've definitely been known to let folks borrow. Then I picked up Sadie, uh, Zadie Smith on Beauty. Unfortunately, I have to take a lot of stickers off of this one. But I love that it's already a very broken-in trade paperback. And Zadie Smith is an author that I've wanted to pick up forever, especially this particular title. So when I saw it and it was 50 cents, 
I definitely had to have it. All right, and then another cover buy, because I know I've seen this all over the reading internet communities uh, against the country, a novel by Ben Matcalf. I do not know anything about this. Definitely one that's gotten a lot of hype in recent years. When did this come out? 2015. Okay. I know that I've seen this over and over and over again. So I think it's been over and over again with good, good reviews. I'm not certain. Again, 50 cents. So then the next book I picked up was Goodbye Vitamin by Rachel Kong. And this I think was a book of the month pick that I did not pick. But it's another one that I have seen over and over and over again. This is like an awesome cover. I love how colorful it is. And it's teensy, so it'll be really good for any kind of readathon. This says, told in captivating glimpses and drawn from a deep well of insight, humor, and unexpected tenderness, Goodbye Vitamin pilots through the, lo the lost love and absurdity of finding one's footing in this life. Yeah, that sounds fabulous. Then this is just like a hodgepodge of stuff that I picked up from various retailers, Amazon, and then my other local bookstore. So we are going to start with The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. If you saw my January, uh, if you saw my January reading wrap up, you know how much I adored this book so much. This is about Achilles and it's Madeline Miller is just such a beautiful writer. In this one you have Achilles and you have Patroclus and their friendship and companionship and just the sweeping hero heroism of Achilles. But it also just has like heartbreaking pieces of a really beautiful love story. But it does go into Helen of Sparta being kidnapped and them laying siege on Troy and all of those wonderful mythological things that we all grew up on. So she just does such a such a beautiful job. I cannot wait to read Circe. I really want to read that in February. I'm sorry I keep looking at my hair because I think it looks like dirt. All right, next I have Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove. And oh my goodness, look at those stars, y'all. So beautiful. So yeah, Lonesome Dove, man. This is a 25th anniversary edition, and it is massive. It is absolutely massive. But look at those stars. So I have read... Probably like this much of Lonesome Dove in my life. And it is such a daunting undertaking, but I definitely want to get to this in 2019. This is just a sweeping tales of Texas and cowboys and love and, uh, you know, heroes and outlaws, whores and ladies, Indians and settlers. There you have it, folks. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I would like to get to this in 2019. Oh, I'm going to have to start a whole new stack with this bad boy. All right, and then I picked up Josh Mallerman's Bird Box. And I hate that it has the Netflix Forever thing. And I have not watched Bird Box yet. I, I loved this book. I did. I loved it. I thought that it was just so interesting. It was unlike anything I had read. So, and then I picked up The Gown, and this and this is about The Gown. I believe that this is, it is historical fiction, so I think you have like a modern day, and um, it's not really about necessarily uh, Queen Elizabeth and Philip's wedding, per se. It is the gown it's about the gown and it's more about the ladies who made the gown the fashion house the ladies that worked at the fashion house that princess elizabeth picked up her dress to marry philip so i think that it goes i think now it's modern day with one of 
the dressmaker's great-granddaughters perhaps finding something to do with the dress. But anyways, I don't want to ruin too much or uh, for myself or for you. But if, So I think if you like the crown, you'll like the gown. I know that I love the crown, and that's one reason why I picked up the gown. And this is by Jennifer Robson, and she wrote Good Night from London. I haven't read that, but that makes me think that she is definitely a British author, and I would really like to get into more British historical fiction. Very interesting. All right, next up I have one of my most anticipated books of January of the year, and that is The Only Woman in the Room by Marie Benedict. And this is also a fictionalized account of an actual person, and this is about Hedy Lamarr. If you do not know who Hedy Lamarr is, she was a uber duper famous actress in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond. She is absolutely beautiful, but she was also... A, an inventor. She invented a lot of things. In fact, she said that she invented a soda-like drink for the soldiers because they couldn't get Cokes. I don't know. I'm, I'll get back to you on that. It was something like that. But yeah, so she was an inventor. She invented a lot of things in her spare time, but she also fled the Nazis and her husband in, I believe, Austria, I, I could be wrong, I want to say Austria for some reason, and came to America and what it is just a world-renowned actress, and she just has such a cool story. I've always just thought she was beautiful and etc., but I'm really excited to read this fictionalized account of her life, even though I definitely want to read some non-fiction on Hedy Lamar as well. But this is a short book. I will definitely be getting to this soon. Oh, look how cool this is. I don't know what she's making there, but I want Next, I picked up Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. This was actually my very first Frederick Bachman, and it ripped my heart out. <laughs> this was absolutely phenomenal from start to finish. I absolutely devoured this and I am so glad that I read it. I uh, I feel like this should be required reading for every single high school in this entire world. The entire world should read this. This, this deals with a hockey team who one of their star players rapes a girl at a party and the absolute fallout and division and it is just so harrowing, so unsettling, but also just his writing is beautiful and the way that he weaves a story is just he is a master. I am su I'm super excited to pick up more by him. I don't know if the next one will be um, Us Against Them or, or whatever the, the sequel is to this because I don't know if I want to go back to Beartown immediately and get back into that divisive um, situation because it was... Ooh, he really, really makes you like... I mean, just rips your heart out. And some of the things that some of the town people <sighs> said that, that thought she was making it up or that thought, oh, that thought he could never do that. You know, oh, oh man, it will, it, it will make you furious, but it is so true to life. And it's so unfortunate that it is so true to life. Um, oh, it's just, it's so good. I really implore you to pick this one up. This was outstanding, truly outstanding. All right, and then I picked up, which if you saw my January wrap up, I said, oh, I read 15 books, including one that has to do with something else, blah, 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 and then never told you what book that was. No, it was The Winter's Tale. By William Shakespeare because I am still doing my Hogarth Shakespeare series. If you are not 
friends with me or following me or whatever the word is on Instagram. You may not know that I have done this since June. And this is the third Shakespeare play that I have read. And I am then reading the Hogarth. I'll do a whole thing on the Hogarth Shakespeare project. Basically what they did was they took Shakespeare's plays. I believe there are six or seven of them. And then a, and then an author, like we have Ann Tyler, Margaret Atwood. Um, uh, anyways, you have some very famous, well-known authors of today who then go in and they and they write a fictionalized novelization of obviously it's all fiction then they write a novelization of the play and Gillian Flynn is working on one and for whatever reason I want to say she has Othello if she doesn't have Othello maybe she has King Lear she's not gonna have either one of those because I don't know what does she, I could look it up, but I won't. So there will be some new Gillian Flynn at some point in the future, and it will be Shakespeare adjacent, Shakespeare esque. And I am so down for that because I absolutely love Gillian Flynn. Okay, and then I also picked up The Tempest, which was another one that I have read for this Hogarth Shakespeare project that I'm doing, but I just absolutely, I don't know if it's easier to take that light off of these. Look how beautiful this is with the Tempest. And then the, oh my gosh, the backs are just so good too. Look at that. It's a baby. So these are Pelican Shakespeare by Penguin. These, I am definitely, hmm, another thing I'm going to collect. I definitely want all of these. And then I saw some other Shakespeare plays. Um, I don't know. I don't remember who it was, but the covers were so stunning. And I, I just, I was like, no, walk away, Amanda, walk away. Okay, next up I have a book that was in my stocking from my parents, and that is, she said, Witty Words from Wise Women, and I absolutely love this. This has been so much fun to just crack open and read a little bit of. There's all kinds of people in here, but also I love how it is broken down into parts, meals and manners, um, Writers, so you have like Willa Cather, Sarah Joseph uh, Hall, um, just women, men and women. And so like here's one from Virginia Woolf under men and women. And it says, why are women so much more interesting to men than men are to women? Oh, Virginia Woolf. I just absolutely love this matrimony. There's some really that I just, this has been so much fun. Life. Oh, Edith Wharton. Let's see. Life is either always a tightrope or a feather bed. Give me the tightrope. I love it. So this has just been fantastic. My parents are the coolest. And yeah. Oh, appearance. Let's see here. Let me find a good one. Coco Chanel. Nature gives you the face you have at 20. It is up to you to merit the face you have at 50. <laughs> hey, maybe I should write that on my bathroom mirror and remember to take off my makeup. All right. If you watch my January favorites, you know what I'm talking about. If not, I'm just randomly yelling at you. All right. And then last but certainly not least, you know I paid a visit to my local Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree has been killing it with books lately. So yeah, I picked up In Search of Mockingbird, and this says, what can Erin learn about her mom from a tattered copy of To Kill a Mockingbird? To Kill a Mockingbird is one of my absolute most favorite books of all time. And so yeah, I don't know, it just says, Dear Dad, I took the money Grandma sent me for my birthday and bought a round trip ticket to visit someone very special. Don't worry, I'll be back soon to take care of Miss Maudie. Love, Erin. So I believe, 
No, okay, it is fiction. Sorry. I don't see where this says a novel, so I thought, well, maybe it might be. But obviously, this is, this is written by Loretta. Loretta Ellsworth, so it's not written by Aaron. But anyways, I definitely want to read that at some point. And it's short, so it might be good, for, again, for a read-a-thon. <laughs> and then I picked up Spinster by Kate Bollock. And I just really like the cover. I want this couch. It's really cute. I like her dress. <laughs> and this is just nonfiction. This says, Making a Life of One's Own. Obviously, with a title like Spinster, she's probably saying that that's a sarcastic word and we should probably stop using it and she's making it really funny so to me I felt like we could be friends because that's exactly my sense of humor also to name my book something like oh you think I'm a spinster guess what that's my title also the title of my memoir would be I'm in a mood and then I picked up respect the life of Aretha Franklin by David Ritz and gosh that's just Oh, Aretha. Ooh. I just, I cannot wait to read this. This is actually on Hoopla, so I'll probably listen to this. And I really want to get around to it. But if I don't get around to it before November, I'll do it for nonfiction November. But I probably will get to it before then. But I just had to have that on my shelf. Just, ugh. Love her. All right, and then I have The Full Catastrophe, and this is Travels Among the New Greek Ruins, and this is nonfiction travel, a transporting, good-humored, and revealing account of Greece's dire troubles reported from the mountain village, idyllic islands, and hard scrabble streets that defined the country that define the country today. Greece is a place that I have always, 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 always wanted to visit, mainly because I love Greek mythology as well as Roman mythology. There, obviously, there, there's a lot of parallels and similarities there. But I uh, just really love Greece, and Greece is—it's one of those places where, by the time I get there, it it may no longer exist. It's really sad how um, how grim. The, the tourism has become, and it's just the economy, etc. Of course, I have some cookbooks because it was December when I picked these up, and there were a lot of cookbooks. I got a lot of Christmas gifts at the Dollar Tree for a dollar because they had fabulous cookbooks this year. So I picked up like doubles of some <laughs> Harvest to Heat, Cooking with America's Best Chefs, Farmers, and Artisans. So this all looks amazing. And there are already some that I have, like, flagged. I absolutely love cookbooks. I love cookbooks. I could sit and just read a cookbook for hours. I love it. I have a book of a place that I want to visit so bad the next time that I go to New York City. And that is the Chelsea Market. It is an indoor food hall. Oh, my goodness. And this is Chelsea Market Makers Recipes, Tips, and Techniques from the Artisans of New York's premier food hall and so it has recipes but it also has a lot of stories here's chelsea market there's another really great picture here of chelsea market so definitely a place that i want to visit and then i picked up southern livings country music greatest eats show-stopping recipes and riffs from country's biggest stars i don't know i picked up quite a few of these for christmas also but oh hello that looks delicious but i figured you really can't go wrong with a bunch of down home southern cooking because that's my favorite and i love nashville so i thought that was really cool and then i picked up sweet celebrations a cupcake addiction cookbook by elise strachan strachan i'm not certain who she is but it just looks really cute. It has a lot of really cute seasonal living items, which you know I'm just obsessed with. And ooh, waffle pizza, what? Ooh, Lord. Okay, so I definitely need to be getting into that one next. And then I picked up Real Simple Celebrations. Easy entertaining for every occasion, because like I said, I am a bit of a seasonal living gal and I love any excuse to entertain and decorate and 
serve the people that I love food. That is my love language to feed folks. And so, yeah, and I thought this was really just beautiful. Okay, y'all, those were the 43 or 4 woo, books that I picked up in the months of December and January. Thank y'all so much for sticking it out with me while I told you about all of these books. And hopefully you will see some of them, most of them, all of them, in wrap-ups real soon-ish. <laughs> I am trying to be better about reading my shelves this year, and I am definitely going to start. I didn't do it for my January wrap-up. Obviously, I mean, I left a whole book out of my January wrap-up, so I wasn't great about the January wrap-up in general. I was in a rush, so I need to slow down and really plan out these videos moving forward because I want to tell you what books were already on my shelf and, like, some stats etc about those I definitely like I said want to bring you my book of the month collection and see how many books that I have read and see what books I want to read next ish and try to read more of my book of the month books because I do get three of those a month and I don't always read even one a month it really just depends <laughs> So, yeah, and sometimes I do purchase books that I've already read just so that I have a copy of it. So we'll see. I'm really interested to do that video. So hopefully that will be coming up here pretty shortly. The next video that I want to do is a pack with me for a really upcoming trip that my husband and I are taking to Nashville. So look out for that soonish, probably this weekend. So have a wonderful day. Thank you all so much for watching and I really appreciate all of your love and support and I will see you in my next video. Bye y'all.